Welcome back to the channel guys, I'm Chris and we're back with another video, it's been a little while but we finally got some free time to sit down and record some more videos and what we're going to have a look at today is we're going to have a look at the Siemens memory addressing area internally to the PLC. Now one of the biggest confusions that we see with Siemens PLCs is people not understanding the internal memory area as it differs from other PLCs such as Mitsubishi and Omron PLCs. What we're going to do is we're going to show you how to work with the Siemens memory area, the internal bits, the bytes, words and double words and how you can easily corrupt data if you're not aware of what you're doing. But anyways we're back and let's get into it. So if you've ever done any work with Mitsubishi PLCs, Omron PLCs, you'll know that you've got internal memory, you've got internal bits, which are signified by M for Mitsubishi, and you've got internal data registers, which are signified by D. So for example, if I just open up GXWorks 2 here, I've got myself a project, and if I just open up the global labels, and open up global one, for example, I could just create a tag, let's just call it test, and set this up as a bit and if I want to just choose an internal register so not a hardware input or output address I just want to choose an internal register I would just use M0 and that there is a bit an internal bit inside of the PLC now if I want to create a data register I want to hold some data what I would then do is I'll create another one so test data and I'll create this as a word and to signify this, what we would do is we would just use D, zero. You'll notice that I'm using zero for both terms. I'm using zero for the M and I'm using zero for the D. That's perfectly fine because with Mitsubishi, they have segmented their internal memory. You have M bits on one side, then you've got data registers on the other. Now with Mitsubishi, every data register that we see here is a 16-bit word, unless we tell it otherwise. But here I've got a 16-bit word and then I've got an individual bit. Now this is great when you're working with the PLC because if you're choosing internal registers to use such as bits, words, double words, etc. You don't have to worry about clashing these data registers and these bits inside of the internal memory of the PLC. Siemens however is different. So what I've got here is I've got a notepad of the internal memory addressing area of the Siemens PLC. And this is what it looks like for bits and data registers such as bytes, words and double words. And it's that. It's just a massive amount of ones and zeros, or in this case, zeros. These are all bits inside of the PLC. Every single one of these zeros is a bit inside of the PLC, inside of Siemens. And for Siemens, they use the term M to identify an internal register. Now, depending upon what you're wanting, for example, if I just want an internal bit that's just going to go from a logic 0 to a logic 1, I would use, for example, M0.0. .0. That there would signify an internal bit. If I wanted a byte, which would be a collection of 8 bits, I would choose MB0, for example. If I wanted a word, that would be MW0, and a double word, which is 32 bits, would be MD0. The problem is what I've done here is I have overwritten that address zero multiple times now inside of the program. I'm using it as a bit here, I'm using it as a byte, a word and a double word and inside of Siemens you can't do that as we overwrite in the bits with these other registers. Inside of Mitsubishi, it's fine, you can use M0 and D0, they are completely separate, but inside of Siemens, you can't, you can't start mixing these around. So let's have a look at these internal registers. So for example, what is a bit? Well, a bit is either gonna be a zero or a one. So if we ever want the digital signal inside of the PLC, that's just gonna turn on and off, we would just choose a bit, and we have a huge collection of M bits inside the PLC. You have thousands and thousands and thousands of bits available. So for example, M0.0, .0, my next one would be M0.1, etc., etc. If I wanted to choose a byte, a value up to 255 if it's unsigned or a value up to positive 127 if it's signed, then I would be using 8 bits and that would be signified by your MB0, but the MB0 doesn't just consist of MB0, it consists of your M0.0 to your M0.7. And this is important because as we can see here, my MB0 has now grouped together our M0.0 .0 up to M0.7, meaning that these two bits that I'm using here can't really be used. 
So let's have a look at this inside of the Siemens PLC. Let's just close this down here. We won't save that. And let's just close down GXWorks 2. Not interested in that. So here I've got a Siemens PLC program opened at the moment. And in this Siemens PLC program, it's just a blank program. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the tags. So I'm going to open up our PLC tag folder. I'm going to go do show all tags. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an internal bit. I'm just going to call this here test. And it's going to be using an M bit here. So it's not going to be using an I, it's going to be using an M. And then I'm going to use test 2 and test 3. You'll see here that we're using these three internal bits. Now inside of Siemens, we've got what we call an assignment list. And we can actually see what bits we are assigning inside of the program. So if I go into my program here, OB1, and I just create a basic program with two contacts, go into a coil and I choose M0.0 .0 and M0.1. When these are both on, they turn on M0.2. We can then go to the assignment list and we can see these bits being used inside of the memory area. So what I'm gonna do to do that is just select my PLC folder over here, go to tools and then go to assignment list. Open up your assignment list and we can see on the left hand side we've got our hardware addressing, the inputs and the outputs and on the right hand side we've got our internal bit memory addressing area and as you can see here we're using memory byte 0 and we're using these three bits inside of memory byte 0 and as I said now if we want to use a byte inside of the program I can't use MB0 for example if I go back to my OB1 program and I just insert an instruction here and I just insert a move instruction just so I can move some data around and I'm going to insert the value 0 and I'm going to move that into MB0. I am now overwriting these registers here inside of the PLC. If we look at the PLC program now in the assignment list, you can now see that these areas are shaded out. They're sort of like a darker gray than the other areas. And you can see here, we've got this little jumper bar on the actual B column. This B column signifies that it's a byte. So we can see here that we're using a byte inside of the PLC program, MB0, but we're also using these three bits here inside of the PLC program as well. And that there can cause problems. Let's have a look at how this can cause problems inside of the PLC. Let's go back to main OB1. And what I'll do is I'll just delete one of these registers here and I'll just change this to a different M bit altogether just so I can modify it. I'll just use M10.0 for example. So what we have here is we've got a program where when M10.0 turns on, M0.2 turns on. However, we are moving 0 into MB0. So if I save this program and then I download this to the PLC, what we'll then do is we'll modify M10.0 and Network 1, which should turn on M0.0, .0, but because we're actually writing 0 into MB0, the byte, all of the bits in that byte will go to logic 0 and it will turn off. Okay, just start all there, minimize that, and let's go online with this. Minimize that there. And there we go. So we can see here currently, inside of MB0, there's our 16 hash, that there is your hexadecimal addressing, and that there is 0, 0. If we just right click that, I can change that to decimal, so I can see that we've got the value 0 inside of there. I'm going to now modify M10.0 and modify it to a logic 1, and you'll see that M0.2 is turning on here. However, if we look at MB0, it's still reading the value 0. So, what is actually on and what's actually off? Well, if we create what we call a watch table over here, I can type in MB0 and I can display this as a binary value. And if we look at this binary value, we can see that all of the bits are logic zero. So if I type in M0.2, as that's what we're controlling here, enter that, we can see that it's actually false, even though it's on there. 
Now, the reason why this is displaying as though it's on is this is because it's updating on the actual scan and displaying it on the scan. So it's saying here that M10.0 is on, so that coil will be on. However, in this network, we're moving zero into MB0, and that's actually turning off m0.2 inside of the program it's actually turning off m0.0 all the way up to m0.7 which is including our m0.2 so what you're really seeing here is a lie so to speak it's not actually on in the program and we can see that through our watch table so if i go into my program here in network 3 and i just type in m0.2 not m0.0 and i turn on a coil for example q0.0 when I download that, the PLC, and we view this, the coil will be off. And there it is there. So here, M10.0 is on. M0.2 is on at this point in the program. So the laptop is updating it and displaying it as though it was on. We then move the value 0 into MB0 and 0 that register. So all of the bits in that byte turn off. M0.2 is now off inside of the program, and that there is turning off Q0.0. That there is a conflict in the addressing, because now what we're doing is we're overwriting it here. So you've got to be very careful with internal registers with Siemens, because it's very easy for you to just assume, well, I'm using M0.0 here, so I can use MB0, as MB and M are different. They're not. They're all part of the same memory area. It's not like Mitsubishi. It's not like Omron, where they separate their memory areas, where you have a whole collection for M bits and a whole collection for data registers. For Siemens, it's all in one area. So... That also means I've got to be very careful when I'm addressing words and when I'm addressing double words. For example, here, if I just come offline and I just delete network three, and I just delete network one for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move zero into memory bit. I'm going to move zero into memory byte zero. I'm going to move it into memory word zero, and I'm going to move it into memory double zero. So let's have a look at our assignment list now. If we just go to that, we can now see that we've got that M0.2 still there, and that's just because it's in our watch table. If I remove that from our watch table, there we go. It'll disappear from our assignment list. You can see here that we're using MB0, MB1, MB2, and MB3 in the program, even though I only have us using MB0, MW0, and MD0. This is because, first of all, a byte is just 8 bits, and that there, MB0, that there is your 8 bits, and that there is your first byte that we're addressing, MB0, inside of network 1, and there it is there. When we write to a word, we're addressing to 16 bits. What Siemens does when you address to those 16 bits is it uses the 16 bits starting from your M0.0 .0 as we're using memory word 0. So for example, in our case, our word MW0 is using MB0 and MB1. That there is your 16 bits inside of the PLC program and these 16 over here as well. When we write to a memory double, for example, memory double zero or MD zero, that there is using four bytes of information as it's 32 bits. Four bytes, four times by eight is your 32 bits. So here, our MD zero is actually using MB zero, then it's using MB one, and then it's using MB two, and then it's using the MB three as well. It's also technically using MW0, which consists of these two bytes, and it'll also be using MW2, which will consist of these two bytes here. And it's also technically using everything from M0.0 .0 up to M3.7 in the program. So when you're actually working with Siemens internal memory, you've got to be very careful because it's easy to just use addressing that's already being used. The best thing to do whenever you want to make a modification to a program or whenever you want to use addressing, such as your internal registers, is to check the assignment list and check if it is actually being used. Because we can see here, we're actually overwriting these addresses multiple times now inside of the program. 
To neaten this up, what we would do is we would go back to MB. What we would do is we would go back to OB1. We've got our MB0 here. We could then use MW2. And then for this guy, we could then use MD4. Okay. And now if we go to our assignment list, this is what we'll then see. Everything is now separated and there's nothing overlapping inside of the program. So here, there is our MB0, and MB0 just consists of the bits 0.0, .0 to 0 0.7. We've then jumped to MW2, which then uses the bytes MB2 and MB3. And then what we do is we then jump to MD4, as that's the next available register after that, and that then uses MB4, 5, 6, and then 7. A good rule of thumb when you're working with Siemens PLC programs and you're using things like bytes, words, and then double words, is four bytes go up in ones. So if you're using bytes MB0, the next one available will be MB1, MB2, MB3, MB4, MB5, etc, etc. If you're using words, go up in twos. So for example, if I'm using MW0, my next available address would be MW2, MW4, MW6. That way we're not overwriting anything inside of the PLC program. And for double words, go up in groups of four. So if I start from MD0, I've then got MD4, MD8, MD12, MD16, etc. One thing that we try to do with Scanthane is we try to actually partition the addressing inside of the PLC program before we actually start to write the program. That way it mitigates this from ever happening. So what we would do with Scanthane is we would say, okay, let's get our notepad up. So what we would actually do is we would then dedicate certain areas of the program to bits. So for example, we might say, okay, anything from M0.0 .0 all the way up to, just for an example here, M999. Dot seven. That there is just for bits, nothing else. If we want to use a byte, we would then use MB1100, for example, all the way up to MB, all the way up to MB1999, for example. That there would be for bytes. For words, we could then use MW2100 all the way up to MW2998, for example. And then for double words, we might use something from MD3100 all the way up to MD3996. And that there would be the structure of our program. That's just for an example. We would probably reduce that a little bit depending upon the size or increase that depending upon the size of the program. But that there would allow us not to overwrite any of our addressing, not to overwrite any of the bytes, not to overwrite any of the words, not to overwrite any of the double words or bits inside of the program. So for these chaps, we would just go up in bits by one. For this, we would then just go up in bytes by one. For this, we would go up in words by two. And then for this, we would go up in doubles by four. And you'll notice here, we've got this slight increase of 100 here. We're not just going straight to MB1000. We've got that gap 100, and that's just room for expansion if we need it, okay? So we've got that available to us inside the PLC. So this is just the way that we actually just partition the program sometimes when working with Siemens PLCs. That way we don't overwrite anything inside of the PLC program. Now, what I want you to do is just a quick exercise for yourselves here, thinking about the Siemens addressing structure. What I want you to do as an exercise is I want you to tell me or write in the comments below what is the very first bit inside of MW0. So what is the very first bit inside of MW0? Quick tip if you're trying to work this out is think about what bytes MW0 uses. Think about what bits MW0 uses, and then think about the order of those bits. It's not as straightforward as you think it is. Try and think of that answer there, and we'll come back to it next week. Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed that little introduction to the Siemens memory addressing area. Like I say, it's very easy to overlap any of the actual addressing. Have a go at that little exercise there, which is telling me the very first bit inside of MW0, and we'll show you that next week. Stay safe, everybody, and we'll see you again later on.